We tested 500 prompt variations for a new LLM and 10 classification feature, and the results surprised us. Hey, it stands from VoiceFlow. And in today's video, we'll be diving into intent descriptions and how to improve your prompt performance. These videos are for machine learning engineers and curious developers. So for more content, make sure to go to voiceflow.com research and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We recently released our LLM and 10 classification feature which lets you handle user actions and direct the conversation into the right direction. This raised the question, what's the best way to write descriptions? To do this, we tested 500 variations with five different variables. We looked at the prefixes, suffixes, description capitalization, non intent descriptions, and using AI to generate these descriptions. This combination led to over 500 different experiments. So let's dive into the results. To set the scene, let's talk about our methodology. Going back to our LLM and 10 classification architecture, we used our encoder model to choose the top 10 candidates for our datasets. We used the WHO64 and CureCart datasets, which are common in 10 classification benchmarks. We verified how well our encoder model worked. We found that the average recall for the top 10 candidates was in the 90s. So that's pretty good for our intent classification task. So once we passed off these top 10 candidates to the LLM, what did our descriptions look like? In the raw formats, these descriptions were defined as JSON objects. We defined the keys as the intent names and the descriptions as the values. We then processed these descriptions into a prompt format. We defined the description first, indicated with a D prefix, and then followed that up with the intent that we're supposed to classify it to. So let's step back and look at the big picture results. How did each of our models perform on the datasets? So let's take a look at the average accuracy per model. We found that the Haiku model performed quite well on the WHO64 dataset, achieving 87.6%. ChatGPT Turbo 0125 achieved around 81% for this dataset. Now for the CureCard dataset, we found that the results were actually the opposite, that Haiku achieved a 51.7% accuracy, while ChatGPT Turbo achieved a 67% accuracy. So quite the discrepancy between the two datasets and the two models. So going deeper into this analysis, we looked at each of our variables. We started off by analyzing the prefixes. And the way that we changed the descriptions was adding three different prefixes before our base description. These prefixes included trigger this action when, and then we put the description, a phrase about, and the user said. And we basically added these for each of our combinations. Now there are two competing hypotheses on how well this could work. On one hand, you're adding extra information into the description by defining what the user is saying. That might boost performance. On the other hand, it's introducing extra tokens that might distract from the actual meaning of each of the descriptions. So what we found is adding a prefix improved the performance on each of the datasets. For the WHO64 dataset, the top performing value was adding a phrase about before our descriptions. Meanwhile, for the CureCart dataset, adding the user said produced the top results. So these results weren't completely consistent. Adding a prefix wasn't always better. Similarly, we looked at the Haiku model. We found similar results that trigger this action when prefix performed the best for the WHO64 dataset, while for the CureCart dataset, a phrase about performed the best. In this case, the results were more pronounced for the Haiku model, so adding a prefix actually benefited it more. Now on their own, prefixes did not give us a clear result for best practices, so we broke it down further into suffixes. So the way that suffixes worked was very similar to prefixes. We took the descriptions and added something to the end. The first one was adding please to make sure that we asked the model nicely, and the other one was actually a removal. We removed any punctuation that existed. So for these experiments, adding please as a suffix actually performed the best, which is kind of interesting. Now highlighted in these charts are a combination of the prefixes and suffixes. And for the who dataset, the best combination was trigger the action when as our prefix and please as our suffix. Pretty interesting combination. For GPT 3.5, the top result was a phrase about as our prefix with no punctuation as a suffix. So pretty surprising. Now here I've included another format to visualize this. This is a cluster map and shows us a gradient across the different models and combinations. Now for these results, we still didn't get too much variance. So let's dive deeper and add the other variables. Now going into our third variable was capitalization. Our question was how well do these models perform with capital or lowercase letters? Maybe it changes how the tokenizer works and interacts with these models. Now for capitalization, there is very little variance, with a slightly higher variance for the CureCart dataset when we didn't capitalize the descriptions. Now looking at this capitalization and uncapitalization plot, 
you can see that it looks pretty random. So we're not going to look too deeply into these results. And the fourth variable that we tested was looking at adding a non-intent. In our original experiment, we didn't define a non-intent in a description. So we wanted to see if adding a non-intent, which contained the contents of when the user asks about something else, would this actually improve our results? So what we found for the cure card data set was that adding the non-intent actually improved performance by quite a bit. IQ was the most affected, but GPT 3.5 showed a small variance here as well. And looking at all our results, you can see that this patch right here of light blue data, where the non-intent is equal to true, shows the cluster where Haiku performed the best. That was pretty interesting. Our final experiment, and maybe the end of my prompt engineering career, was having AI-generated descriptions. So what we did was take the first three utterances from each intent in the data sets and run them through three large language models. We did this for GPT-4, Claude Opus, and LAMA 70 billion parameters. We then use these base descriptions for all of our experiments. So will LLMs writing descriptions replace me? Well, perhaps. For HiQ, we found that GPT-4 descriptions performed the best. And for the cure card data set, we found that GPT-4 and LAMA-3 performed the best, GPT-4 Turbo boosting Haiku's performance, and LAMA-3 boosting ChatGPT's performance. Now, what's interesting here was that GPT-4 content wasn't favored by GPT-3.5. That was pretty surprising. For the WHO data set, we found that LAMA3 actually wrote the best descriptions. This was pretty surprising. And generally across all our results, Claude Opus wrote the worst descriptions. So better luck next time. And for our WHO data set, if we look at all our results, we can see that human and LAMA descriptions performed the best. And then Opus was, was to the end of the section. And for the cure card data set, the best descriptions were written by GPT-4. So we ran all these experiments we wanted to test if they're statistically significant. So what we did was build out two different cohorts. The first one was the top five results, and the second one was the rest. So we reran the top five results 75 times and compared these two cohorts. So visually, looking at this chart, we see that the results were quite compelling. And we double-checked this with a Z test and found that the p-values were quite low. So generally, variance and temperature did not contribute to the top five results being better than the rest. But we were still not satisfied. How did the top five results actually compare against each other? We generated a confusion matrix between two of the top five results to compare what was the confusion between false positives and false negatives. As you can see here, we have the two confusion matrices. You can see on the diagonal the comparison between the predicted intent and the true intent. Now to compare these confusion matrices, we subtracted them to find the variance. The difference between these top two results was one used the suffix with please, and another one didn't. We can see the results and the difference of the confusion matrix, with red specifying more examples that had the please suffix, and blue signifying more results with the no suffix. Generally, what we found was that the prediction with no suffix had a higher false positive rate, i.e. more non-intents than required, and the please suffix had more false negatives, that we had more non-intents attributed than we should have. Now, this was pretty interesting. Two similarly performing prompts had quite a big difference between false positive and false negative rate. So looking at the aggregate performance isn't always what you need to do. You need to dive deeper. So that was a lot of information. What are our recommendations for changing your descriptions? Our first recommendation is to add prefixes, suffixes, and none intents to your descriptions. These will generally boost performance. Our second recommendation is to use AI-generated descriptions. This will speed up the development process and also gave us higher results. That's a win-win in my books. Beyond changing descriptions, we recommend changing other parts of your prompts. In previous blog posts and videos, we found that changing the model version and the prompt structure itself leads to much bigger result differences. So spend your time creating good training data and benchmarking for each model. In a future blog post, we'll dive deeper into the training data. So make sure to follow our channel and subscribe for future updates. This has been Dennis from Voice Low Applied Research, and we'll see you next time.